Uh, Robert Halfman, we often say a busy week, but at the moment you, your weeks must be busier than ever. And firstly, you, Ukraine, you must be deeply concerned both from a global, national and local level. Uh, it's a tragedy. Um, and on a Wednesday, it was probably the most uh, moving time I've ever had in the House of Commons because the Ukrainian ambassador was up in the public gallery. I'm sitting right at the back where I often sit in the House of Commons. And spontaneously, um, the speaker introduced him. Everyone gave him a round of applause. I, I nearly cried. Um, the You could see very slightly tears in the Ukrainian ambassador's eye, just almost very thankful. And uh, I pray to God that country becomes free again. They're very brave and courageous people fighting against the odds. Um, it's pretty awful and frightening what's going on. Is your government doing enough to help um, refugees? They could do so well, much more, couldn't I'm, they? I'm really proud of the government's response. I'm actually proud of our country's response. I'm proud of um, Boris. I'm proud of Keir Starmer, uh, the Labour Party. You might be surprised to say Conservative because the, on the whole, um, all the parties have been pretty united. We have imposed incredibly tough sanctions. You know, millions of companies have no interaction. Uh, oligarchs are having their assets taken away. Um, the so-called oligarchs, which are very, very rich Russians, um, they are. Um, they, uh, Boris led the world in in what's called the SWIFT system, which is how banks basically interact with one another. So the Russians were excluded from from that. Um, and importantly, um, the government have sent 100. I think I'm saying like over 145 million of pounds of aid, humanitarian aid. And um, many millions of pounds of military aid, you know, tank support, missile support, weapon support, um, to um, Ukraine intelligence uh, support. And uh, what um, Priti Patel, who is the Home Secretary, announced this week is that they would allow up to 200,000 Ukrainians, uh, family and relatives here to come into the UK. And I think that's right. I think that's a good thing. We have to make sure that we have the resources I want to welcome in as many as we possibly can. We've also, we've also got to make sure we've got the resources, the housing, the, the health care needs that they will have uh, as well. So these are very, very difficult issues. And many of these Ukrainians, thank goodness, who are leaving Ukraine are arriving in safe countries. You mentioned the word oligarchs there. Do you think your party is too close to, to Russians and oligarchs? Um, I think that um, all parties have made a mis mistakes in the over the past 10, 20 years. Blair brought Putin into Downing Street. You know, the shadow foreign secretary took money, um, over £2,000 apparently from Russia today. Gordon Brown's foundation got thousands of pounds from Spurbank, a Russian bank, which has now been sanctioned, like a main bank like NatWest or Lloyd's. So I think all of us have made mistakes. The important thing is, um, first of all, the, the um, Conservative Party only takes money from either British people or British companies. That's the law. All donations have to be registered, registered, and um, the um, that is incredibly important. But I think we've all got lessons to learn about this kind of thing. Um, no one imagined in a million years. Um, that a country would be invaded in this way. Because seven years ago, we, we interviewed you when Helen Goodman, the MP for Bishop Auckland, she was referring to Dmitry Firtash, mm. who was a Ukrainian oligarch, and, and you, you defended it on camera. Do you have, seven years later, do you have any regrets about that? This is a smear from day one and complete and utter, genuinely outrageous. Um, so first of all, I've never had any direct or indirect involvement with any oligarchs, Ukrainian or otherwise. This guy is a Ukrainian oligarch. In fact, I had to look up who he was when, when this uh, first started. Uh, I was, uh, not me, I have had no personal amount of funds at all, but my local party um, for the, uh, elections was given money by a British man uh, who owns a British company that was registered with the Electoral Commission he has involvement with Ukraine, but he has many other business interests as well. And he'd also given previously money to the uh, security, the then security minister, Dame Pauline Neville Jones, and to Conservative Party HQ. All these donations are done with due diligence. You know, you have to get them approved by Conservative Central Office. And this is literally a nothing but uh, a smear. And uh, I will robustly uh, defend myself. And as I say, 
Um, all, you know, it's not, it was Gordon Brown who, who's taken money, it's not him personally, but his foundation from Russian banks. It's David Lamy who's on Russia Today, he's the shadow foreign secretary, who took money from Russian Today, a couple of, a few thousand quid, a couple of thousand quid. So, you know, I think if people want to, I'm not that kind of person, I think I said this to you seven years ago, if people want to put smears about, that's fine, but I will robustly defend it. But. I'm going to give as good as I get if I have to. We've spoken globally and nationally and locally. You've been helping a Harlow man trying to get out of Ukraine. How's that it's been going? It's an unbelievable story. Um, I don't know if he wants me to name, so I won't name the individual unless that's up to your Harlow and um, the constituent, but he's incredibly... Well, we have run the story on him, yes, so he's in the public domain. So he's know. called Mr Rossiter, but it's an unbelievable story because he had to get a, a visa to, to come here. Um, by he lived very far from Kiev, which is where the visa centre was. We've been working very closely with the Foreign Office, the Home Office. Um, he got to Kiev by the time Kiev the invasion had started, and then uh, the British had to move the embassy for safety reasons to very on the border with Poland. I think Lvov, I think it's called. So it was very difficult for him, but we got agreement from the Foreign Office to help him with his visa and to be recognised, you know, if he needs to take flights out. But of course, the flights were then banned. He had to get out of um, the Ukraine. There was also a problem because of he was suffering from loss of insulin. And um, so I was busy contacting organisations on the weekend, on Saturday night. Um, uh, on Sunday, we, we did the Red Cross. We um, I got some contacts through the chair of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee of people I could uh, speak to. So we did everything we could to help him. And then now we, um, uh, uh, the latest is that, thank God he's on either uh, on the border or just uh, has got into Romania via a special convoy. And it's him and his wife and his baby. And I wish them every possible thanks that the, the, good, the, good, the good heart that they've got to safety, but they weren't able to go back to their own area because it had been taken over by the, uh, by sadly by the Russian army so they hadn't get, got most of their belongings so they've had a very tough time and I wish them every uh suggestion if they come if they fly to Harlow I'd be delighted to meet them and uh help them in any way I can we talk about you know the local connection with, with what is going on yeah. um okay, one was going to be the cost of living isn't it the, what's yeah. going to be the consequence but cost of living is bad enough as it is isn't it? and have you had a lot of contact from constituencies concerned about the cost of living so, and gas and electricity so this is why uh you know initially people said not not everybody but this is a few weeks ago i think around november christmas time when no one knew whether the russians were going to invade people were saying well why would we get involved with the ukraine and there was a very famous saying in the second world war when Chamberlain said uh, about the Sudetenland, it's a faraway country, in Czechoslovakia, it's a faraway country of which we know very little, um, which because Hitler was allowed to uh, invade that without any proper response, in my view, and history, uh, Churchill certainly thought that. So Ukraine is not a faraway country of which we know nothing. One, because of the repercussions, they've just bombed a nuclear plant, or, I mean, which is incredibly frightening, but also, also because um, they, they, uh, what's happening is that it's causing the oil price and the energy prices because of Russia, Europe, thank God not Britain, but Europe's dependence on Russian gas, but it's forcing the wholesale price of energy bills to go up enormously. And the, um, uh, the wholesale prices of, uh, of oil. So when you go to the pump, it's over 150 now, even Tesco, I've just been to. When you go to, um, the, so when you see your energy bills come in, I've just had a constituent contact me literally this afternoon, you know, going up enormous amount over 150 quid. You know, unaffordable for most people. The government are now spending nine billion pounds to help reduce energy bills, both through a council tax rebate, that's separate from the Harlow Council tax cut that's coming through, which is 57 pounds, but it should help between 100 and 150 pounds off people's um, bills and cutting energy bills as well. I've asked them to do more on the green levers, at least have what I call a down, downward elevator. So when the energy price goes high, they cut down these green taxes that are on all our energy bills, which are meant to fund renewable energy. Um, and they also actually go to fund people who can't afford to pay their energy bills at all. Uh, there's a social side to those levers. 
Um, and then um, what I've also asked the government to do is look again at reducing VAT on petrol and diesel and um, to, um, uh, uh, to look at the fuel duty, which they've frozen for 11 years, which every, you all know, residents and all will know, it's something I've gone on about every year. It's got the government to change their mind in 2011, and ever since then they've not put fuel duty, duty up, but it is very hard. I hope that we get tax cuts for lower earners on the way particularly, um, but we have a big problem because we spend £400 billion on COVID, we have over a trillion pounds in debt, we need money for the NHS, we need money for the roads, we need money for schools and mental health, um, we need money for all kinds of things. So it is a very tough tightrope to walk between spending on the priorities that the public in Arlo want, but also um, paying back the debt, dealing with the one trillion debt, because otherwise that just makes life more expensive for everyone, as well as um, helping people with cuts in the cost of living.